I want you to think for a moment of your most favorite person in the world. How much time do you spend with them? Even if you don't live in the same city, would you FaceTime them or call them as often as you can? Well, how much time do you spend with God? <laughs> uh, it can be said of you that you walk with God if you spend a lot of time with Him. So let's talk about that. It's straight ahead as Arkansas Live starts right now. Yesterday, I closed the broadcast with uh, listing the conditions um, of walking with God. And we used uh, Enoch and Noah and Abram as examples. But uh, the life of faith is required to walk with God. What does it mean, mean to, to walk with God? It, it's not really talking about a physical hand-in-hand -hand walk down the street, even though that can be entirely possible. But if you walk with God, and we use those three characters, Enoch, Noah, and uh, Abram, if, if you walk with God, it means to connect with Him with uh, the life of faith. He is the originator of your faith. Every born-again person has received the measure of faith. It's God's faith. It came from Him. So a life of faith. To walk with God, you have to walk a life of faith. We're going to read in today's material that two cannot walk together unless they're agreed. Now, you're never going to be in agreement 100% with everybody. But it's up to you. You can be in 100% agreement with God. So you have to walk together in a life of faith. You also have to walk together in the Word of God. God is His Word. The Word is God. In the beginning was God. And in the beginning was the Word. God was, with, was the Word. And Jesus was made flesh. Jesus was the Word. He was made flesh and dwelt among us. So we have a, a picture, a capsule, a human embodiment, if you please, of the uh, Word of God. Jesus was the Word. I'm, I'm very careful to analyze descriptions and words as I hear them taught and preached. I, maybe I'm a little bit too a, a critical of these things, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to accept anything that's not accurate. And I examine my own. I think about my own statements and references too. I, I want to be correct. And the other day I heard uh, someone talking about when God created man in Genesis, when he, it said he, in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it said man was, God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness. And then they said, God <clears throat> reproduced himself. And I thought for a moment about that, and I meditated, it, meditated on it all day long. And the scriptures that came up inside me was there, there was only one individual in the scriptures that is referred to as being God in the flesh. And it wasn't Adam. It was Jesus. Jesus was God in the flesh. Now, you might think I'm nitpicking and splitting hairs, but I'm not. There's a reason for it. The manifested sons of God doctrine, and it's been around for a long time, actually concludes that we have already received our glorified bodies and we are the sons of God. Well, now, you know, you might say a physical son is a reproduction of the father or mother. Uh, the, the son or the daughter is an offspring, but they are not the father and they are not the mother. I'm, I'm, the older I get, the more I look like, talk like, act like my father, my earthly father. And it's scary sometimes when you see what's happening to you. But I am not my father. Do you see where I'm going? you see the difference? I am not my father. I am not God. I am made in the image and likeness of God. 
I'm a triune being like God. God's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'm spirit, soul, and body. I have all the attributes. I'm, I'm made a, a, a duplication in kind. I am made in His image. His life and His Spirit is in me. But I'm not Him. I'm not my Father. I look like Him, talk like Him, act like Him. I'm not my mother. I'm not my father. I'm, I'm created by them in their image. There's only one man that qualifies to be God, and that's Jesus. And, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is when you walk with God, you want to make sure you don't cross the line and think you are God or that you're becoming God. There was a joke about the Manifest Sons of God doctrine years ago said, yeah, the guy, guy believed he had his glorified body and he was doing some roof repair on his house and fell off and broke every bone in his glorified body. <laughs> that that manifests the sons of God's doctrine is trying to resurface an, under a new name or a new topic. Uh, we are not going to become God. We are made in His image and likeness. But there's only one man that qualifies to be God, and that was Jesus. He's the God-man. So I am the express image. I am the exact duplication in kind, but I'm not him. God did not re reproduce himself in me. I have his attributes. I have his faith. I have his nature. I have his righteousness, but I'm not him. I'm the exact duplication in kind. I'm made in his image after his likeness. Now, once you sort that out and get it right, then you won't have any fear of getting off and, and walking off the edge. Or it might help some of you to realize that you are in his image and likeness. You're not a worm. You're not unworthy. Your righteousness is of God. I'm not talking about your self-righteousness. I'm talking about the righteousness you got from God. Jesus made you righteous through his work on Calvary. Without Jesus' work on Calvary and his shed blood, you, you die in your sins. Your, your righteousness is as filthy rags. So on one side of the coin, if you go too far, you get off. On the other side of the coin, you don't go far enough. You stay a worm. You stay unrighteous. You stay, uh, you know, um, a, a pauper in the things of God when God has made you a prince. He's made you an heir. Well, that's not where I intended to go today, but I got off on that little rabbit trail because if you're going to walk with God and walk in faith, you have to honor the word of God and you have to develop a life of trust. This is what it means to walk with God. Are you walking with God? Do you trust his word? Do you trust him? Jeannie's book that she wrote several years ago, learning to trust in the faithfulness of God, learning to trust God's faithfulness. To walk with God, you have to trust him. You have to learn to trust him. So it's a life of faith. It's a life of the word of God. It's a life of trust and it's a life of joy. You know, the Apostle Paul said in the book of Acts, he said, I'm going to finish my course with joy. And we assume he did because he told Timothy, he said, I've finished my course. I'm ready to be offered. I've kept the faith. He walked with God and he said, I'm going to finish my course with joy. You're not going to walk into the into the throne room, into heaven, you know, on a cane, all beat up, bandaged. No, you're going to walk in with joy. So those are the characteristics of walking with God. Now, let's go over to Hebrews 11, 5 and verse 6 and read this in the scriptures. Um, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. 
How do you please God? It's not by works. It's not by sacrifice. It's not by suffering. You please God by walking with Him in faith. Listen to it again. Enoch had this testimony before he was translated that he had pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you can deduce from that that if, if Enoch pleased God, the only way you can please God is with faith. Then Enoch walked with faith. He walked in faith, believing, trusting. So if you go over to Matthew 3, 16 and 17, and I'm just, I'm just showing you these uh, comparisons, these analogies. Matthew chapter 3, and let's look at verse 16. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, does the same application apply to uh, Jesus as it did to Enoch? Of course. You think Jesus didn't walk by faith? You think Jesus just lived and did what he did because he was the Son of God? No. Jesus was a man, but he was the Word of God. He was the Son of God. He was God in the flesh. When the angels announced his um, miraculous birth, and they said, you'll call his name Emmanuel, which, which means God with us. He is God incarnate. God incarnated in flesh. Hallelujah. I could go off on another rabbit trail right now, but I won't. He said, this is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, which means he walked by faith. Everything Jesus did was by faith. It wasn't because he was Jesus. It was because he walked by faith. Now, let's go over to um, first John. Oh, no, let's go over to the Gospel of John. Let's go over to John chapter 4, verse 34. John 4, 34. Jesus said to his disciples, My meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Wow. Wow. Even Jesus acknowledged God as his father and everything that he was sent to do, he called it his work, God's work. He said, I have been sent to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. This is, this is not my work. VTN is not my work. VTN is his work. That ought to make it even more precious to you to know that this was not my idea. This was God's work. This was God's gift to you. I, I probably don't say that enough. VTN was God's gift to the state of Arkansas and people around the world because we're now reaching around the world every day. We threw Roku and live stream, we go into 30-something countries, 15 states. I mean, but primarily, VTN was God's gift to Arkansas. Now, that ought to make you feel special. That ought to make this state feel special. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next point. How shall two walk together unless they be agreed Let's go over to Amos chapter 3, and let's look. Oh, boy, I thought I had it marked. It might take me a while to find Amos. Amos hides out sometimes. Daniel, Hosea, I think, I think he's in there somewhere. Daniel, Hosea, 
I have to sing my son's song, the books of the Bible. There it is. Amos chapter 3, and let's read verse 3. Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Of course, the understood answer is no. Now, we're talking about walking with God. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to be in agreement with Him, with His Word. That's how you're in agreement with Him. You have to be in agreement with His Word. There are too many Christians that are, you know, contradicting God's Word or uh, doing their own thing instead of adhering uh, to the Word. Well, how do you walk together in, in agreement? Well, one, you walk by faith. If, you, if you're going to walk with God, we've already covered that. You have to walk by faith. Now, if, if you want to, you could apply this. This might be good advice for some young married people or maybe some young people that will get married someday. Um, in 37 years of pastoral work, I counseled a lot of people and marriage counseling, both before they got married and after they got married. And I cannot emphasize the importance of when you get ready to marry somebody, you need to make sure that you all are in agreement over, you know, make you, make, get you a yellow pad, get you a sheet and write out everything and, and sit down and talk about it. That's what I encouraged them to do. What do you want in a husband? What do you want in a wife? What do you want in life? Where do you want to be five years from now, 10 years from now? Who's going to handle the money? Who's going to uh, discipline the children? How many children are you going to have? Where are you going to live? What do you... you need to be talking about the areas of agreement. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about the nitpicking stuff like <laughs> that create who's going to handle the finances, who's going to handle the checkbook, who's going to make the money decisions. I'm not talking about uh, cosmetic things like, um, you know, whether you're going to have uh, uh, red flowers on the table or yellow flowers on the table. I know when my wife and I, and we've been married over 50 years now, when my wife and I were building our home, and we built three homes, but when we were building our last home, I read in the scripture where it says, let every wise woman build her house. So I said, have at it. You do it. You pick out everything. You decide what you want, colors, rooms, drapes, paint, whatever. And boy, that was such a joy. But unfortunately, a lot of men can't do that because they've got to be in control. Well, if you're dating someone or you're thinking about getting married, and I know I've gone off on another side trip here out of Amos 3.3, but agreement is, is tantamount. You better make sure you're in agreement. I married a couple one time. The, 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 the girl, the bride, was, oh, man, three, four inches, maybe five inches taller than the groom. And I said, you know, you're gonna have, does this bother you? If it does, you're going to have to settle this first. And I, I told the girl, I said, you can't be, uh, and, and the man, the groom, I said, you can't always demand her to wear flats and let her not let her wear high heels if she wants to. I said, you can't always hold that uh, up to her. You're going to have to get over that hurdle. You have to get that settled. And I talk to them about these things. I bring up all of these things that they have to get settled because you have to come into agreement. Now, there will always be things that you'll have to come into agreement. But I tell you, I've, I've learned over the years, and you have to deal with yourself. Men, men are the ones that have to deal with this most of the time. Sometimes you have a controlling woman or a controlling wife or factor in a marriage, but most of the time the men are the ones that uh, want to control everything. Or I guess the other side of the count is he's a bubba and he don't care about nothing. He, he, as long as he can sit in his easy chair and, and <laughs> watch his ball game, he don't care what goes on. But that's, you know, that's an extreme. There's, there's, there's extremes on both sides. But the point is you better make sure that you're in agreement. Oh, well, I'll change him after we get married. No, you won't. You better get him changed before you get married. 
oh, he'll get saved afterward. Maybe not. Then, you, then you've, according to the scripture, you've married an infidel. You've married, uh, I don't mean it the way Islam teaches it. I mean, you've married a non-believer. And then you're going to have more difficulties. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? So find out what you agree on. Find out what you disagree on. You may have already been married 10 or 15, 20 years, and you still have areas of disagreement. To sit down and talk about it. Why do we need to, to be in agreement on that? I tell you what I did early on in our marriage, and I know this is not a marriage counseling session, but it might help somebody. Uh, I noticed that, and of course, my wife, Jeannie, she had been a, a professional. Uh, she was an executive secretary to the president of the Bankers Association. I mean, she was climbing the corporate ladder, so to speak. And, uh, and she had managed uh, an office and she had managed a manager, a president, and she had, you know, definite uh, skills and knowledge in that area. And she had her own paycheck. When we got married, okay, the question comes up, who is going to uh, control that bank book? Who's going to decide whether we buy this piece of furniture or whether we go on this trip or what, <laughs> what we do here? Who, who's going to decide these things? Well, I'd been, you know, taking care of myself and uh, I had my, and we had a joint bank account. And I noticed that you know, we get in arguments over money more than anything. Who's going to who's going to spend what? Who's going to pay for what and so forth? So one day I got the bright idea uh, and I thought, OK, this is not working. And she shouldn't have to, quote, come to me and get my approval I know some of your husbands are wanting to turn me off right now, but she, she shouldn't have to come to me and get my approval if she wants to go shopping and buy her a new dress or whatever. So I went down to the bank and I opened an account for her in her name. It was her account. It, it had her name on it, not mine. It wasn't joint. I still had our joint account, but she had her own account. Oh, the other part of it was when we got paid, we would both put our check, our paychecks, we deposit our paychecks into our joint account. But now I told her and I gave it to her. I said, here is, I did this for you. I hope it's okay. You now have your own account, your own checking account. It belongs to you. It's your name on it and you deposit your check into your account. You don't have to put your account in our joint account anymore. I put my check in our joint account. I paid all the bills. I bought all the groceries. I did everything that was required out of our joint account, my account, I guess you could say, and she had her own bank account and she did, and still to this day, does what she wants to with her account. It's hers. It's got her name on it. Well, we knocked that devil in the head in the very beginning. There's no more argument about money. You want to buy something? Buy it. It's yours. <laughs> and I know some of you are thinking, some of you women are thinking, oh, praise the Lord, pray for my husband. And some of you men are saying, are you crazy? No. This is how we solve that problem. Now, God might deal with you to do it uh, differently. But I tell you what, we've been married uh, 50 years, over 50 years now, and it is a success. It's working, and you can't argue with success. So how can two walk together unless they agreed? And you'll find that the longer you walk together, work together, love together, you will be in agreement. And if you get out of agreement, just stop it right there and get back in agreement. Because Satan will work on that strife and that division. And, and you'll find out real quick, men, women, how selfish you are. Oh, I know I stepped on your feet then. 
how selfish you are. I want mine. This is mine. No, it's according to the law, it's ours. It's both. It belongs to both legally. Okay, let's move on. Let me get out of that uh, little hole I dug for myself. So you walk in agreement by walking in faith together with God. And then you walk in the spirit. God is spirit. He's not flesh and blood. He's not a man that he should lie. God is spirit. So you have to walk in the spirit. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians and let's look at chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and let's look at verses 6 and 7. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So if we're going to walk together, we have to walk by faith. Now I go back to the marriage because the marriage is actually, according to Ephesians, a mar the marriage is the revelation of the church. And this is why a lot of churches are not growing or progressing because there's a lot of disagreement. There's a lot of strife. Uh, in there. But if you're going to walk together, uh, then you're going to have to walk by faith. You're also going to have to walk in the spirit. Uh, let's go over to Galatians chapter five and verse 16. God is spirit and you are spirit because you're made in his image and likeness. Uh, Galatians five Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That's what Adam succumbed to. That's what Satan tempted Jesus with in the wilderness. So how can two walk together unless they agree? You walk by faith, you walk in the spirit, and tomorrow we're going to talk about walking in the light. So join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live walking with God. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching in the world too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.